Hey guys, welcome to Inexpensive Arms. I'm Steve, and today we're going to take a look at the Bear Creek Arsenal 16 inch nitride treated 6.5 Grendel barrel, uh, Type 2 Grendel, and uh, it is M4 feed ramps, carbine gas. Not a really exciting barrel, to be honest with you, and a bit of an odd duck. And the reason that is, is that most 6.5 Grendel barrels are going to have a probably a little bit heavier profile since they're geared more for accuracy and be a little bit longer just to maximize the accuracy. Or on the flip side, they're going to be a little bit shorter, like 12, 13 inches, and be set up for SBRs to capture as much energy as you can um, since since uh, it's a relatively hot load and uh, can push a little bit faster than a 5.56 in, in a short barrel. So this is kind of a mix between the two. You've got a standard carbine uh type barrel and uh i figured you know what it's worth a shot i uh, i picked it up for 5340 uh, bolt carrier group was 60 bucks and i picked up some magazines five magazines for uh 75 bucks so i figured you know what i can get a whole new cartridge whole new caliber and i'm in for about 200 dollars counting the magazines why not give it a shot so i'm gonna briefly detail some of the trials and tribulations that i ran across uh, trying to get this working so I got everything set up, got it all installed, <clears throat> and uh, took my build out to the range. And unfortunately, there was some FUDs there doing some kind of uh, accuracy contest. So they had the main range shut down. I wound up having to go to uh, the kitty range at 25 yards. Um, wasn't worth testing anything aside from function, so I ran a magazine of 25 rounds through of uh, steel-cased uh, wolf ammo, and it ran flawlessly. I was happy. So a couple days later... I came back. At this point, the 100 and 200 yard ranges were open. I figured, all right, let's get it sighted in. We'll, we'll give it a shot. So I got about 10 rounds into uh, getting it sighted in, and uh, it wasn't patterning well at all. I was trying to sight in the scope with uh, the Wolf. Uh, it was looked like a shotgun pattern. And uh, about the ninth or 10th shot, I, uh, I had a failure to extract and ended up having to uh, knock it out with the dowel rod. When I got home, I noticed that the extractor itself was actually sheared. So I contacted Bear Creek Arsenal. They were very, very quick. Uh, they arranged an RMA. I had a UPS tracking number, uh, a shipping label printed to, to uh, ship my bolt carrier group back to them within five or 10 minutes of contacting them. Um, I had uh, a replacement, or I thought I had a replacement about nine days later. But unfortunately, that replacement was actually I sent in. I sent in a bolt carrier group. They sent me just the extractor. So I contacted them. They apologized for the mix-up, and they shipped me my bolt carrier group back. So, bonus is I now have a bolt carrier group with the spare extractor. So you know, if anything happens like this again, I'm covered. Uh, so in the meantime, because I was a little paranoid about how poorly it had shot before the extractor sheared. I decided to uh, take any uh, variables out of the equation that I possibly could. And so I tore down the upper and started from scratch. The upper is squared, so it's lapped and squared. Uh, the barrel has a very tight uh, friction fit in the, uh, the barrel extension does inside the upper receiver. At that point, the barrel nut is uh, torqued on at 70 foot-pounds. Gas block is perfectly aligned. Um, muzzle device is not over torqued. It's uh, just a crush washer with an A2 muzzle device, but it was it was on hand type plus about an eighth of a turn. It wasn't moving, but it was not over torqued, and uh, everything was free floated. And so at that point, I figured, hey, great, let's go out to the range and uh, give it a shot. And uh, I brought out an extra scope as well, just to be safe. So we got it up, and the same exact thing happened as before. It patterned like crud, and I mean crud. Like I was sighting in my scope at uh, 50 yards, and it was eight, nine-inch groups, you know, and ended up uh, getting it reasonably <laughs> sighted in, and uh, <laughs> decided to uh, take it out to 100 yards, and so that was an ex exercise in futility. Even when I was shooting good ammo, I couldn't get it to group uh, reasonably well at all. And so I decided to move it back to 50 and just see what the groups were and uh, where they were. So I'll show you those targets here uh, right now. All right, so from left to right, we've got uh, Hornady 123 grain SST. Next, we have Hornady Black 123 grain ELD Match. 
And then lastly, I've got Wolf Steel Cased 100 Grain. That's just the cheap blasting ammo. Um, now, to be honest with you guys, with a cheap setup like this, I bought this to do hood rack crap, basically. I wanted to be able to blast inside 200 yards with reasonable accuracy, which I would, with Steel Case, I would say is, uh, you know, 3 to 4 MOA. And I, I basically just wanted to have something that wasn't 5.56, five, it was a little bit more powerful, it was a little bit more fun to shoot, maybe. It had a little bit better term terminal ballistics downrange. Um, unfortunately, I didn't see the kind of results I was hoping to get, not by a long shot, and it wasn't me. Uh, I removed as many variables out of this equation as I could. Um, during the time I shot, I, uh, I was all sandbagged up front and back. Um, I tried two different scopes, two different scope mounts. Um, I already went over how I uh, tore down the build after the first range outing and uh, rebuilt it. Didn't change anything. So at this point, it's the barrel. It ain't me. And uh, it's going back. But without further ado, here is the results. All right, guys, let's take a look at some groups. Here we go, Wolf Steel, group number one, 6.8 inches. Not too impressive. Next one, 6.1 inches, a little bit better. Uh, the bright spot of the day was the Hornady Black, which it liked relatively well enough at 1.8 inches. And lastly, five inches Hornady 123 SSTs. Now, you might look at this and say, okay, that's a mediocre barrel with a lot of ammo, and it's semi-decent. It's, it's at least acceptable for maybe hunting with, uh, you know, something like the Hornady Black. But the problem is that this is a 50-yard group, not 100. So double everything. You're looking at 13 inches for the Wolf, 3.5 inches for the uh, Hornady Black, and about 10 inches for the Hornady SSTs. Um, and I can tell you that based on my testing, I shot a lot more groups just with the Wolf Steel trying to get it dialed in. This is about as good as it gets. So, yeah. We'll talk about it back when, once I get back home. All right, so that leads me to my conclusions. Would I recommend this barrel? <laughs> no. Um, I'll be honest with you. I was not expecting great things with Wolf Ammo in this barrel. I was hoping for, I don't know, 4 MOA, 3 MOA, 4 MOA. That's what I was hoping for. Um, the Wolf ammo is slightly undersized for uh, for the Grendel, uh, most Grendel barrels from what I understand. So it's not as accurate. But it should still be typically capable of, I don't know, 2 to 3 MOA. That's what a lot of people online are reporting with decent barrels. So I was hoping, you know, even 4 MOA I'd be happy with inside 100 yards just for blasting. Um but when you're getting 12 MOA at 100 yards and uh, you're getting, you know, 3 MOA with good ammo and th or, or more, I just, there's, there's no way I can recommend this barrel. This is, I, I don't know what happened. Uh, I can't see any defects in it. The rifling looks good. Uh, the chamber looks decent. The crown doesn't look too bad. I mean, I'm not saying it's perfect, but the crown doesn't look bad at all. Um, th this is a pass at any price. And especially when you consider the price of uh, decent Grendel ammo, I mean, you're paying a buck around for some of the good stuff. So it just doesn't make sense to pay $50 for a barrel that's going to shoot like crap when you could pay double that and not spend as much money on ammo trying to troubleshoot it. So this is a definite pass for me. I'm going to be sending this back to Bear Creek Arsenal. I'm probably just going to ask for a refund. I've got a heavier profile barrel coming from them. I... I... I just don't know what to tell you guys. Uh, I've done everything that I can do. I've tried two different scopes. I rebuilt the entire thing from scratch. I feel like I've done my due diligence. And I, I can't even get decent groups at 50 yards, let alone 100. It's, you know, skip this one, guys. Just skip it. Um, for the money, I tend to like Bear Creek Arsenal barrels, especially in common cal calibers like 5.56 or 300 Blackout, things like that. I think they do just fine, but maybe more boutique calibers, they uh, haven't worked out all the the, uh, the bugs on their manufacturing process yet. I, I don't know, but this is a skip for me, guys. So, from Inexpensive Arms, I appreciate any likes, shares, subscribes, and comments. And uh, if for some reason my channel suddenly isn't here, I mirror everything on BitChute, so you can always find me there. 
Thanks, guys, and uh, keep your stick on the ice.